Lord, everybody, why don't we stand and welcome him into this place? Jesus, we magnify you. We glorify you. We praise your holy name. We lift you up, Jesus. Have your way in this place, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somehow forgotten that you are faced with circumstances that you can't live through. Right now it seems that there's no way out and you're going under. But God's proven time and time again. He'll take care of you, and He'll do it again, He'll do it again, if you'll just take a look at where you are. Two. 
thank God. Hallelujah. I feel that in this place tonight. He's a God that cannot change. He never changes. Why don't we lift him up together right now? Lord, we thank you for your unchanging ways, Lord. We thank you that you're our faithful Father. You are so good. Hallelujah. I feel that tonight, and I feel like somebody needs to receive that song as a word. He's going to do it again. The same God that did it before, he's going to do it again. He has not changed. He's still good, and he's still on the throne. Amen. So just receive it tonight. He'll do it again. If you need that word, it's for you tonight. Amen. Our God is a healer. Anybody believe that? I was uh, thinking about all of our prayer requests tonight, and there are many, many needs on the uh, prayer list. If you want to take a look at that tonight, there's lots of sickness going around, um, different, different things, and uh, we've had folks getting out of the hospital, and, and thank God for that, able to come home. Um, I want to mention Brother David Castleberry. He has a surgery tomorrow, so we're going to pray specifically for him that everything would go well and he would get to come home and, and just be healed up quickly. Amen? But I was thinking about all of these needs and I thought about the scripture that says um, to call for the elders of the church and let them pray, anoint with oil, and uh, believe for that healing and the Bible specifically says that the prayer of faith shall save the sick and then it goes on down through there I just want to build your faith here for a minute that it, it, it talks about some other benefits of that prayer like your sins being forgiven and, and all of that but then he goes on through there and he says pray for one another that you may be healed and then it says, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. We are not wasting our time in this place tonight when we pray for prayer needs. There have been many needs that have been touched, I believe, because of the time that we pray as a united body of believers in this place. And I'm asking you tonight, would you pray for those that are in special need? We have the Word of God telling us tonight that as we pray for one another, that they will be healed. So tonight, can you believe that with me? Can you lift your faith up right now? And let's lift these needs up right now and ask God to minister. Lord, we thank you for the power of prayer. We thank you that your name is above every sickness and disease. We thank you that you're a loving God, that you're a healing God, that you have compassion on us when you see our needs, Lord. And we ask in the name of Jesus tonight that you would minister to every situation, Lord. Every name on our prayer list tonight. God, you know them. You know their need. And we speak to them in the name of Jesus tonight for their healing. We thank you for it. And we believe your word that our prayers are effective and that they will avail and they will be healed in the name of the Lord Jesus. We thank you and we pray praise you in advance right now. Let's clap our hands and thank God for his healing power. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Can we pray for Sister Shirley right now? Would you reach your hands forth? Lord, we thank you for your touch tonight. I pray for Sister Shirley King that you would minister to her needs, Lord. We thank you for your healing and we believe it tonight. We give you glory and we give you praise in the mighty wonderful name of Jesus we give you thanks for every need that will be touched in the name of the Lord Jesus thank God thank God amen you can be seated tonight if you would like hallelujah thank God there are so many things that God has been doing he is touching special needs all across the place. Many testimonies have been coming in about how God has ministered, and I believe he's going to continue that. Amen. I just want to remind you um, quickly, Thanksgiving next week. It's already here. Can you believe that? And next week we're going to have Tuesday night 
at 7 o'clock. Don't forget that instead of Wednesday night. Amen. Let's pray together as we sing, as we worship. Let's get ready for the word tonight.
because I don't like to talk. <laughs> I don't like the spotlight being on me, but the song has been in my mind and I don't know who it's for tonight, but I'm here to tell you, no matter what you're going through, you just hold on. God knows exactly where you're at, and it may be a season that you're going through, but you just hold on. He's going to bring you out, because no matter what happens, He has always been so good. So I'm here to just encourage you today, just hang on and trust Him. He knows exactly where you are at. Sometimes the clouds hang low And I'd like to see them go And I ask the question, Lord Why so much pain? give him some praise for that right now whatever you can't think of right now that he's been good to you for he's been he has been so good hallelujah 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 let's praise him a little bit more thank you Jesus hallelujah 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 God has been so good to us and it's definitely a weapon if we can remember that because the enemy comes against you every once in a while and gets to beating you down and all kinds of stuff but if you'll just start praising God for what he has done start picking out all the good things you can think of the further you go the more momentum you gain and after a while it gets pretty exciting when you get to thinking about whatever it is that you're just remembering that God's done for you and uh, you know uh, I think 
I think sometimes we pray prayers God uses us and then we're shocked whenever he lets us go through something because he's given you a personal testimony of you're going to encounter somebody down the road. The only thing you did was ask him to use you, so he says, okay, let's go down this trail here so that way when you meet somebody down the road one of these days, they'll be going through that trail and you can say, well, this is the way it happened and this is the way I came out. Thank God for testing. You're made overcomer. You're made overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. Those two things make you an overcomer. And I just think in there a while ago, God is so good to me. The only way you get those kinds of testimonies, though, is a word called faithfulness. The magnitude of faithfulness means you're there when you don't feel like it. You keep on doing right when you don't feel like it. Faithfulness is not when everything's going good and I'm just how happy to be here. Faithfulness is when I'm not really too tickled about being here. But I just keep on pressing on. I am then representing faithfulness to God. Hallelujah. It's great to be here tonight. Thank you for all the prayers this past weekend. God blessed in a mighty way on Saturday night and Sunday morning. So you had great church Saturday night and Sunday morning, plus another service you here Sunday morning. So um, thank God for all of that. The reason I say that is because I feel like y'all were there because you prayed for us. So uh, um, I, um, we were able to eavesdrop a little bit. Their service started a little bit later, so we were able to eavesdrop a little bit on Brother J.C., and a uh, great job there. And then, of course, Brother Will stepped right up. We um, were able to go back in time and watch, I mean, Sister A watched on the way home. Um, so I listened, just in case anybody wants to make sure. I wasn't watching uh, Facebook and driving at the same time, but we was on, got on that feed. And um, great job, Brother Will, for a great word from the Lord. Hallelujah. And it's amazing how God puts it all together. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's great. Thank God for giving us a good word. Praise God. I am eternally grateful for what God did for us and his plan of putting the word of God in our life. There's nothing like it. Just get over it. There's not a pill. There's not a, uh, a trick. There's not therapy. Anything that will take the place of God speaking to you out of his word. And that's in a culmination. It's in a culmination. I'm not against I hope you understand, I'm not against the world's help. But I just want you to know, you never replace what the Word of God does for you. Stay in the Word. He may direct you. I'll try to, I'll try to quit talking and go to preaching here in a minute, but it still blows my mind. Of course, I know it's a small pop, but anyway, it still blows my mind. Whenever Isaiah came into Hezekiah, and he told him, he said, uh, God's added to your days. 15 years, remember that? And uh, he's getting ready to turn around and leave, and he said, oh, you need to go get a poultice, a, a whatever it was. But anyway, it was something to put on that boil that was on him. And I'm thinking, wait a minute. You just told him he's going to add to his days 15 years. Why couldn't you just said, oh, God, heal this man? And But instead he said, God's going to heal you, take some medicine. Okay, if you got that figured out, some of you got it figured out, I can tell, look on your face, but it still bothered me. Why? Because God takes us down roads we don't understand sometimes. But we can trust him, and you know what? As the guy lived out those years, there's a moment of obedience. Hallelujah. We won't get into that, but I have something else here I feel very very much very strongly that I need to share with you tonight I do like would like to tell you tonight brother um, Wibby Bell his brother Andy sister Brenda and them let us know brother Wibby let us know that his brother Andy was put in intensive care and um, they put him on a ventilator and said he had a 50-50 chance of surviving 
uh, was that like yesterday or day before? Day before yesterday. Well, the report Brother Whibby brought up here a while ago was that today they moved him out of the intensive care. He's off the ventilator in a regular room and expects to go home tomorrow. Yeah! I know I've about worn it out, but here it goes one more time. Declare his doings among the people. Make mention that his name be exalted. We need to tell what he's done. It builds somebody else's faith, whatever you're going through. If God can bring Andy out of, out of, uh, off of a ventilator, out of intensive care, with a 50-50 chance of surviving, even surviving, and in two days he's in his own room and ready to go home tomorrow, looks like. You can rest assured God can do anything that you've got tonight that may be hanging in the balance. Let that just go ahead and push your faith on into, it doesn't matter whether it's physical or not. I just kind of feel like telling somebody tonight it could be spiritual, it could be physical, it could be uh, any other situation, but our God is in charge. Praise God. I want to take your attention tonight to the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 29. Romans chapter 8 verse 29. For whom he did foreknow. Now, I believe he knew everybody. He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Now, if you don't mind, I'll go ahead and just grab the other end of this now, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 is very familiar. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your, everybody say reasonable, reasonable service. There's nothing unreasonable about living godly. It's good for you. It just makes sense. I won't spend a lot of time on that if I don't have to, but I'm just telling you, it makes sense to live for God. Sin leaves a lot of tracks in people's lives and on their face and in their, in their body and all kinds of things when it runs over them time and time again. But if you'll rise above that and live a godly life, it's amazing the change. So it's worth it. Look at your neighbor and tell them it's worth it. All right, verse 2. And be not conformed. Well, let's see. Back up there in 829, he said he predestinates us to be conformed. And then he says, be not conformed. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I want to talk to you tonight about whose image will you become? Whose image will you become? Would you stretch your hand this direction right now and believe the Lord with me that I'll be able to communicate this? Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would help me right now to communicate this to this wonderful group of people, this congregation, Lord, that loves you and are faithfully here tonight. Help us, Lord Jesus, to tap into the inspiration and the energy, O oh God, to move forward in you and believing that you've got a plan for every one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. The Lord bless you. You may be seated. I'm like, I'd like to take a moment here to kind of um, share something with you. Now, it says, be ye transformed. Everybody say transformed. Transformed by the renewing of your mind. And if you looked up transformed, it would say something to this effect. To change in form. To change in form. Appearance or structure. It's a metaphors what it says, metamorphose, to change in condition, nature, or character, to convert. 
So it says also that if something that is metamorphosed also is to change the form or nature of to transform subject to metamorphosis to undergo or be capable of undergoing a change in form or nature. So transformation is somewhat like you would know as metamorphosis. So I don't view that as being a clap your hand magic trick and it's over. It's a gradual change that's going on. Okay? But to be conformed, listen to this, is to act in accordance or harmony, comply, to conform to rules, to act in accord with the prevailing standards, attitudes, practices, etc., such as of a society or a group. To be or become similar in form, nature, or character. Kind of sounds like living for God for me. But, I don't know if you really know this or not, and I think you probably do, but I'm just going to tell you that our default concept, our default setting is to be conformed to the natural world. Be not conformed to this world. So don't act like them. The world's standards are not yours. The world's attitude is not ours. Their practices are not ours. We're not going to become similar in form or nature or character to this world. So be not conformed. But over a gradual process, he said, my goal for you is to be transformed. Now, am I transformed? Very slowly, but I'm getting there. But I am transformed into the image of of his son. Hallelujah. So it is, I'm sure you've been around computer and other things long enough to know that the word default simply means it's original settings. If you get out there somewhere, I think this keyboard's probably got a panic button or you can turn it off and turn it back on if you're out there trying to get a certain sound or you transposed and you're not really sure how I get back to where uh, the original A440 is at. You can turn everything off and start again. Let me tell you something. Every once in a while, we need a reset button, and I believe God's helped us talking about that in the 50-year anniversary. Brother Sullivan brought that to us. But every one of us individually needs a moment in which we just go back to God and say, I've lost my way. I still want to be saved, and I still want to continue the process, but would you just take me and get me back to where I originally began to follow you. Take me back to that old cross. Take me back to where I made up my mind to not be like the world and let me move forward. Hallelujah. But there is a devil, there is an enemy, and we fight our flesh that does everything possible to keep us from being in the image of Jesus Christ and reflecting him being the image of the Son of God. And since that is not happening, I will tell you that it is a process continually. Hallelujah. It's a process continually, and it doesn't matter how old we get, we still have the project of making sure that what the Apostle Paul said was, I die. Yep. So we have to be transformed out of our old nature into the supernatural. Now, how do we choose to initiate practices that will transform us into being conformed into the image of God. First of all, I don't want you to get mixed up here, but I want, I want to say this and probably rattle you a little bit, but everything's not spiritual. A 
Luke 14, Jesus was talking, and he said that if a man goes out to build a house, he said, or to build a, a tower, he's got to first sit down. He's going to do a very carnal thing. Got to see how much money he's got, what the price of two befores are. You heard about the old boy that went to the, went to the lumber yard the other day, and he said, I want a two before. And they said, how long do you want it? And he said, I want it a long time. I'm going to put it in the house. That probably weren't what they was asking. They want to know if you wanted eight foot, 10 foot, 12 foot, 14. Oh, you want to hear another? Who said no? My right ear's working just fine, Sister Pam. Oh, <laughs> well, they're giving you credit for it. <laughs> a couple of boys was driving, was driving to work not too long. You're going to get it anyway. So. <laughs> a couple of boys driving to work, and this guy was seeing this real tall tree. And he said, man, he said, I just wonder how tall that tree is. And they drive the next week, and uh, the, every, every day they'd pass there, he said, that just bothered me. I wonder how tall that tree is. And old boy um, driving, he said, well, I tell you one thing. I'm going to stop this. He said, tomorrow I'm bringing the chainsaw, and we're going to cut it down, and we're going to measure that tree. He said, I don't want to know how long it is. I want to know how tall it is. So, so uh, anyway, there's inspiration for tonight. But. So you want your two befores for a long time. So you're going to have to sit down. Incidentally, it's not the same price that it was a year ago. What does that say? Well, that means if you get a price today, you better start building. Because it's liable to be going up. Of course, I know it You know, could be coming down, but hadn't had much trend of that lately. It might be, it might be 50% off, but they don't have any, so... We got a sale. Don't that just, isn't that fun when you, you got this big sale going on and man, you, whew, all right, man. I've been waiting for this stuff to come down so I could buy some of it. Walk in there and say, I would like a pallet of this stuff. And they say, I'm sorry, we sold out. We don't have any. What? It doesn't matter what price it is if you can't get it, you know. Sorry. But this, Jesus injected something that was, in my opinion, totally not spiritual. I don't really mean to hurt anybody's feelings here tonight, but part of the reason you're here tonight was a carnal decision. The carnal part I just did told some jokes. So, No, part of, part of the reason why that you're here tonight, you said, I'm going to church. Probably didn't, whoo, it's church night. I'm going to church. It's just, you, you probably didn't feel an electrical shock come through your body. It's church time. I've heard of people that, well, anyway, I'm not going there. Um, but let me tell you what happened. You looked at the clock. You looked at the calendar, and you said, Wednesday. We got church lined up tonight. And if you were feeling spiritual when you started combing your hairy head, if you got hair on your head, oh man, probably saw a gray hair or something that knocked the anointing right out of you. Something happened, but it. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. But what are you doing? You're doing things in a, you drove here. If you were spiritual when you started driving here, somebody pulled out in front of your, <laughs> carnality just got, I mean, you just had to come to church with a little carnality. There's no way that you can get this thing just so spiritual that everything's just goosebumps all the time. God intended for us to make up our mind that's where faithfulness comes from. That's where a decision comes from, to be transformed. 
So you have to put some things in motion. You have to do some things. Not every day that I've opened up the Bible have I felt spiritual. Because I'm just doing it because it's right to do it. I'm trying to get a word. I'm trying to find a little spirit. I'm trying to find a little communication from, from God. I'm doing that because I said, self, you're going to do this. So what am I doing? I am transforming myself one verse, one chapter, one day at a time to be conformed, taking on the image of the Son of God. Because if I don't do that, my default setting is to be conformed to the carnality of the world. Now look, I'm, <laughs> I'm in a great mood. I just have to forcefully tell you, you don't have an opportunity to not decide. You're going to be conformed one way or another. You're either going to turn out to have a carnal nature that is prone to do the things of the world or you have to get a hold of something that starts pulling you in a direction that says, I'm not going to be that. I'm not going to, I'm not going to live that way. Now, how, how, do you, how, do you, how do you handle those kinds of things? Now, I, I'm, I know it's uh, kind of rough, but anyway, we need, we need to talk about it anyway. Um, we need to understand tonight that... The scripture teaches us that we can set our affection. Singularly, affection. Set your affection on things which are above, not on things on the earth, but on things which are above. So that when I begin to stray and I begin to move back toward the default, I get to the house of God. I, I've had the word of God that I've read, and then I... Something said across the pulpit, something said in a song, there's a move of the Spirit, all of that combined, Spirit and truth, begins to give me understanding of some things. And you know what that does? There's not a thing in this world I don't believe. Uh, I, can't, I can't think of any mechanical device in the world that they do not have to go back and calibrate every once in a while. You have to calibrate it, bring it back to dead center. Because even scales, they begin to, after a protracted period of time of weight being put on them, they begin to get off dead center and there has to be a calibration. It's either done electronically or it's done mechanically, but there is a calibration that has to come. Ladies and gentlemen, that's just an illustration of I have to be willing to be calibrated every once in a while. And I believe that God uses conflict. He uses struggle. He uses pain. He uses the blowing of the wind. He uses all kinds of things for us to realize that our moorings are loose and we begin to need to tighten this up and get ourselves back to where we, where we belong. We have a steering wheel on our life that says, all right, nah, they don't want me in that lane and I don't want in that ditch. So we're making adjustments continually because we're losing that straight and narrow that we originally got on as soon as we, you know, how whenever you come to God and you repent of all those sins and you um, get baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost and man, at that particular point in time, there's nobody could talk you out of anything about God. No, 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 man, I'm going to live for God and I'm not going to do that and I'm not going to go there and I'm not going to say that and I'm not going to, all that kind of stuff. What is it? We're calibrated completely dead center on to the things of God and we're going to walk the straight and narrow. But over time, over the stress, over the situations that begin to come, we begin to lose a little bit of that and begin to work slack. I could probably mention sometimes back in the old times they used to do what was called a valve adjustment. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Some of you mechanics know what I'm talking about. They'd get loud. They'd get noisy. You know why? Because they had, they had worked some slack. They weren't sealing out. They weren't causing the compression, good power to the engine because it's leaking around the valves and they had to go in and had to adjust the valves. 
The reason for that is because that you want good power. You want to keep, you want to keep everything that is combusted. Uh, we want to be able to get that power. There are some people that are living for God today that have a power leak. They don't get as much out of church. They do not get as much out of church because there's something in their life is there's some carbon buildup. There's something going on that's causing it not to seat and you get the full impact of what's being preached, the songs that are being sung. Come on now, somebody. You know what I'm talking about. There's some anger things that go on. I, I, I've said this before, and I'm probably going to say it till the day I can't say it anymore, but I'm going to tell you right now that there is, a, there, is, there is something inside of us that we need to thank God every day that we live that God put us in a church. Amen. Church is more than just singing. Church is more than just preaching. Church has a social life. And you have to. Brother Will, I'm telling you, you just... You just knocked it completely. I mean, it didn't even, the guy didn't get a chance to jump at the fence when you said this one thing right here that was so powerful. You cannot throw stones at the boy if the father's got his arms around him. Lest you risk hitting the father. That was phenomenal. Don't forget that. So what happens is, I end up in a church, I end up in a district, I end up in an organization and a fellowship to where I've got a plethora of personalities and all kinds of things that I'm having to deal with. And you're wondering how in the world, oh, they just get them in there. You ought to go say, thank you. Why is it? It's adjusting your valves. Matter of fact, the people that you despise the most on earth, if you can repent enough times and get to heaven, you'll probably love them the most in heaven. Because if it hadn't been for them, you'd have been the sport brat. So let me, have, let me think how I can illustrate this part. It's kind of going through my head. See, I can say a little bit to this because... The sister that I had that was right next to me passed away. So there was a pretty good gap between Frida, my sister, Frida Kay. So they were almost like mom and dad had two sets of kids, and I was the only kid. I was the only child. So they were, that had that family, and it was me. That's the reason. That's the reason Uncle, Uncle Gary's up here bad mouthing me about being the baby. He's still got problems with that uh, he's here I'd pull his hair I guess that'd be a job wouldn't it <laughs> I tell you what's funny it's so bad I'll tell you what's funny whenever we were in when we were in Mariana working with him there um, Dennis Lee was born and um, we would go to uh, some place, probably a restaurant. And we were, we'd get ready. To, I remember one time specifically, we sat down to eat. The owner of the restaurant came around, yah, yah, you know, and all this kind of stuff. He walked up and he said, well, preacher, ain't you going to tell me about that grandson? He said, that's not my grandson. From then on, just found an occasion. That old boy would be standing around, and I said, Hey, Dad, would you pass me the salt? Back then, he was young enough for it to bother. Now, he wouldn't care. But, we was, but you know what, what, it, what it did for me was, we've talked about this on a number of times. Did you know that siblings, some siblings kind of 
disagree from time to time? Did y'all know that? Well, they did. But me, I didn't have to. Because they're already gone. They're doing their own thing. They don't want me in that anyway. So I just, you know, I was a little bitty brother. And so I was almost raised like an only child. So that's the reason I can speak to what I'm saying. Sometimes if a family just has one child, they don't have to learn to play together. Is this okay or am I doing something that's out of? Okay. They don't have to learn to play together, but guess where the first test is? They go to school. Yes, you've got to share. Yes, you've got to do this. Yeah, you know, and you're having to work. They're, they're in some kitty care place before they go to school. The challenge then is to take that only child and introduce them that um, probably not going to get your way and get that toy all the time. What? I mean, that is foreign. I have been at home. Now, do you understand what I'm saying when I say that God put us in a church? Of course, we got to learn to play together down here if we're going to play together up there. Okay, nobody ran the aisles on that one. I'll, find a, I'll get up here and find something good. <laughs> But you know what he's doing? He's pushing us. He's making us in there. You and David ever have a disagreement? A few. Okay. You need to thank him for them. <laughs> yeah. it, praise God. Praise God. It's not in my notes, but I'll say this. David, whenever he picked up those five Anybody remember how they were termed? Mm, smooth. You know why they were smooth? It's because they'd been tumbling in the brook against other stones. And they did not, they did not end up where they, they were not always where they were at. They started way back up the mountain. And this journey has been through many dangers, toils and snares, a bunch of knocks and floods and storms and they've they've rolled and they've tumbled and they almost flipped out of the brook but a good a good uh, gully washer would wash them back in and the only thing they did then was hit themselves on another rock and they kept on rolling. when they got to the bottom where David was going to finally pick them up they had been through a lot to be smooth stones what's the point I'm so glad you asked the point is that a jagged rock will pick up wind, it'll pick up air, and it'll pick up a, a, a restriction, and it will pull it off the mark. But smooth stones, they don't have their edges. They don't have a drag one way or the other. They fly through the air. That's the reason I'm saying the person that offends you may be your best friend. Because you needed that edge knocked off of you. Why? Because I don't want to be conformed to the image of that world that I get my way or I'm going to throw a tantrum and I'm going I'm to have a fit and I'm going to show you, I'm going to cuss and go get drunk. Whatever the world offers out there that I can try to deal with my problems that way. Or... I can find myself back and saying, Lord, I don't understand this, but would you please somehow turn this thing, do what you said you would do. For we know that all things work together for good to them that love God who are the called according to his purpose. There's not a thing in this world in your life that God can't make good out of if you will stay in the brook and stay with him and say, I'm not going to my default setting. I'm not going back to the way, oh, the way I used to be and conform to that. But I'm trying every day that I live to be transformed and this, part of, this is part of my transformation to be like Jesus, to be in the image of his dear son. That's the image I want to be like. He's rejected. <laughs> he
he's, he's bemeaned, comes to the folks in the community that should have known he was a miracle. But instead, they are so default set that they said, well, that's, that's <laughs> I think that's Joseph's son. The, you know, got the guy that owns the carpenter shop down here? That's who that, that's that boy right there. He played with our kids and they don't even get all stirred up about him being in the village. Can you imagine how it hurt the Son of God? Knowing that he had come to die for them? He came to his and his own received him not. But as many as received him. Some of them said, I don't want that attitude. I don't want to be like, I don't want to be conformed to the thoughts of this world and the mindset of this world and second guessing and cynicism and criticism. And I want to, somehow there might be something here for me in this. But as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of God. I don't, I don't, I don't know, but, uh, you know, we can have a tendency, we can have a tendency to, to say, hey, well, you know, God, he, he's, he's, got his, he's got his teacher's pet, you know. Let me explain to you, it's not his will that any should perish. And that old boy today that's far away from God, the original destination for him was preordained by God that every child of the human race would come back to him. I've done this many a time in my tenure, but I'm, I'm, I just feel I need to do it one more time because there's so much confusion shoveled on us by the word of predestination. I'll never forget. Saddest day of my life was hearing a, a, a young man that used to be in the church pumping gas at a gas station. And I said something to him and about, about church. We got talking about church. I mean, I'm 14, maybe. And uh, he said, no, I just meant to be lost. I'm meant to go to hell. So his idea of predestination was that God picked certain people to go to heaven and other people he sent them to hell. At that point, I, I, didn't, I didn't know how to respond to him. But I am thankful that since that day, the Lord has shown me what predestination means. You know what predestination means? Predestination means that if you're going to go to, to Dallas, you need to start heading west. You need to go down 7 or ever how and get on 30 west and start going. Now, sweetheart, I love you, but if you get down here, hit 30 east and go down to 40 and run 40 into Memphis, don't call me belly aching because you're in Memphis. That's the beatingest thing I've ever seen. I've been, on, I've been out here driving all night, and I ended up in Memphis. I was supposed to be going to Dallas. Well, which way did you go? Well, it don't matter. I just, yeah, it matters. Because you predestined, you predestinated Dallas. But you didn't go by the plan. You got a GPS, you're driving down the road and said, recalculating, recalculating, recalc. You got a problem going on if that's happening. Make a U turn. Make. I wish I could wire some folks up with a GPS, Holy Ghost GPS. And I would try to get the most annoying voice that I could find. Make a U turn, make a U turn, make a U turn. Sometimes they say, make a legal U turn. 
that's the kind I want to make, a legal U-turn. Let me tell you something. I'm passing out legal U-turns here tonight. If you're headed the wrong direction, it's legal for you to make a U-turn right now. But you've got to get from... No, 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 no. It's not going to accidentally happen. You're not just going to wake up and say, well, it looks like I made it to heaven. No, if you get to heaven, it's going to fight, run, push, wait, everything against nature. I have to strive. Since the days of John the Baptist, kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. You let some, some dear heart hear me preaching like that. They say, yeah, that's what I thought. Bunch of violent people. When it comes to spirituality, ladies and gentlemen, we got a fight on our hands. And we can't take it sitting down. We're going to have to get in the, on our knees. We're going to have to do some fasting. We're going to have to get in the word of God. And we're going to have to say, nothing shall separate me from the love of God. Amen. Not height, not death. None of these things move me. Why are you saying that, Paul? Because he said, I feel constantly that war going inside of me. There's something trying to push me back to be conformed to this old world. And my God, have mercy. You know, the biggest lie that the devil's got going on in this world is that you could join the world and be a standout. You're not going to be a standout in the world. You're going to blend in with, did you know that we just looks like in the last few days, we're either at or just about to cross over 8 billion souls. If you're feeling crowded, there's a reason. 8 billion souls on the earth. You can't live a life of sin and stand out. You're just going to blend in with the other 8 billion souls. But let me tell you, if you want to shine, you be one of those that make up your mind to not conform to that world, but to be transformed so you can conform to his image. And they'll be saying, hmm, I'm, I'm recognizing that person. They got a different spirit about them. They got a different attitude about them. They look different. There's something going on with them that's not common. Somebody shout yes. <laughs> Woo, I feel the Holy Ghost up in the house. So you set your affection singularly. Set your affection. You've heard me hammer this many, many times. John saw him and said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin, singular, of the world. The reason that we need to take away the sin, singular, is because that's separation from God. That's not honoring God. That's not putting God where he belongs. And that brings on us beginning to veer back to our default setting. So affection is singular here because if we fall in love with him, Then we can fulfill the scripture of love, not the world. Neither the things. If you don't love the world, you're not going to love the things. If we start loving the things, we have to go back and calibrate. It's good preaching, Brother A. Thank you very much. Praise God. I want, I want to explain something to you. There, there, are, there are things that we begin to move in the spirit realm. And we have accomplishments. One of the things that has amazed me is that in the book of Numbers, I'm not going to the scripture there, I just want to mention this, but in Numbers 21, you can read this. There was a time whenever the children of Israel were going through a real trying time, and God sent fiery serpents among them. That's Numbers 21. All right? Numbers 21, the only way that they could overcome that those fiery servants had bitten them, that venom is making its way through there and it doesn't take long. They had to get somewhere, catch a glint from the, from the sun to look at, you know what they were looking at? They were looking at the curse, the serpent. Well, I mean to tell you that it looks to me like if I was going to give people hope, I wouldn't put the picture of what just bit them up there on the... Okay. So what's this? 
after the serpents were all gone, they kept that old brazen serpent and they used it for an idol. Going completely against God to the point that they even sacrificed their kids to it. Well, how crazy have we gotten? Ooh. Y'all think I'm, I should say what just came through my mind? Okay, here it goes. I think it's of God. I'll tell you that it's no more crazy than what our world's doing right now that won't live for God. They're sacrificing their kids to their idol in the world because they're not going to know God. They're not going to know the fullness of the Holy Ghost because we sacrifice them. It's no different than what they were doing back then. That's the reason it's imperative. We've got to live for God ourselves because this thing's got to be generational and they have no moorings. They have no bearings if we don't give them an example. But watch this, okay? got so bad that when Hezekiah, remember me saying something about Hezekiah a while ago? One of the good things that Hezekiah had done that caused him to have influence with God, hey, 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 it'll cause influence whenever you live for God like Hezekiah lived for God, and he turned the thing around, and he got the church set back up, and they started having services again, and uh, they had revival under Hezekiah's day. Now, just because you're having revival today, does that explain to you what I've been trying to preach to you for the last 10 minutes? Um, that's about how long I've been here, right? Um, but I'm, I, I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to help you to understand just because you're having revival today doesn't mean that you're always going to have revival. So the guy that, I'm telling you, he, he's known for great revival, but he's also known for great failure. Because if you don't continue to push, you don't continue to try to reach that place in God, strive that you may be able. Okay? All right. So, Hezekiah, whenever he came on the scene, you know what he did? The Bible said he called for that old brazen serpent, and he took it and beat it into, ground it up and called it an old piece of brass. He didn't even show it the dignity of saying this. He had no kind words to say because of all the things that it had caused through the years of people diverting back to being conformed into the world. Eight hundred years you know what I feel like the Lord impressed upon me about that you get in deep trouble whenever you think a stop is your destination if you decide you need to go from here to Florida today you're probably going to have to stop but if you just stop that gas station is not going to be as fulfilling as where you were headed on vacation. So people in our world today get so confused whenever they think the stop is the destination. But I suggest to you tonight that we need to understand that there was a symbolism. God put that thing as a fiery serpent in that wilderness for a reason. And that reason was that he was going to show up. Book of Deuteronomy says, Cursed is everything, everyone that hangeth upon a tree. The Bible says his visage, let's stand, shall we? His visage was so marred. It was unlike anything you'd ever seen before. He said, my bones are out of joint. Read Psalm 22 and you'll get a depiction of what happened on the cross of Calvary. You know why it was so brutal? You know why it was so bad? Now you, you might want to listen to this real close because it's going to sound like you probably wouldn't want me to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Because Jesus became the curse. Jesus became the curse. And he said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men. Up. You know what it was? You had to look at him because he was the image. He became, he became the image of the curse so that I could become the image of the Son of God. He 
see, I think too many times the world puts it in this perspective to where it's just kind of take it or leave it. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't have that option. We've got to take it. We've got to. Because there's no option. I hear it screaming in my ears right now. When, when he said, would you also go away? They said, where would we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. If you see a whole multitude of people walk away from the church, if you see a whole multitude forsake Christianity, godliness, and so forth, I submit to you tonight that you were predestined. See, predestination means that God picked every one of us, everybody. Many are called. But the choosing has two things going on. I've got to choose to follow. And that separates out from the wide road to the narrow road. Then I've got to be faithful to it. So the bottom line is this. I've got to make up in my mind that even when I don't feel it, I'm going to do it because the Bible said do it. Please, I'm begging you, in the name of the Lord, hear me tonight. You've got to put the Word of God as the premier authority in your life. And it's not with a, it's not with a mean spirit. It's with a heavy heart that I speak to you tonight to tell you it does not matter how you feel. It matters what He said. There's a devil in this world. There's a mindset. There are fleshly drawings to conform that says, well, if you don't feel it, it's, no, it's not okay if I don't feel it. Well, I can't help how I feel. I can't buy that. I'm sorry. What? No. I have to go back to the Word of God and set my affection to what it says. Well, is it going to be an automatic? No, 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 no. It's metamorphosis. And if I'll stick with it, I'll feel a little bit better about what it says a week from now than I felt this week. And it may take a long time to be transformed. I'm quitting. But I just want to tell you this. I've pastored long enough to see some people that whenever they got in the church whenever they got in the church they ask what do we need to do and begin to lay out a plan of apostolic lifestyle and you know what a lot of them didn't get it Oh, man. And they said, you know what, though? I'm going to do it just because. And you know what happened? The more they did it, the more it was revealed, and the more, you know what they were doing? They were setting their affection. I don't care what the world's saying. I'm calibrating my affection to what he said he wants. Because I'm not going to be like that world. I'm trying to be in the image. So make me in your image. Wash me as snow. Purify this heart of mine. Lord, I'm giving you control. Help me be One that's really true. Make me in your image. Make me more like you. Oh, in your image. Wash me white and snow. Pure as heart. Not 
really late. If there's anybody that'd like to come and pray and let this soak into us. No. 
a hand and thank the Lord for the word we've heard tonight. God, we thank you for the message. Thank you for your word tonight. We receive it. And I pray you would let it fall on good ground. Let it grow. Let it produce the harvest in your kingdom. In Jesus' name. I want to remind you tonight, all of those that are involved with the children's Christmas program, or you have children that are, um, they're having play practice on Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Please uh, get your child here, if at all possible, for they for them to participate and be ready for the program coming up on December the 18th. Also, just one more reminder about uh, next week is our Thanksgiving week, so we'll have service at two, on Tuesday night at 7 p.m. And then this Sunday, church at 10 a.m. As usual, God bless you. We're going to be ready for the great move of the Holy Ghost on Sunday morning. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.